hello. It has been a long time since I have done one of these videos. Like I was looking at my last one like this and it was back in March 2020. Woo! But 2020 and all its craziness is in the past now, so I'm gonna try to post more and yeah. Anyways, you guys probably didn't come here to watch me make excuses about why I haven't posted in a long time, even though those reasons may be valid. No, the reason you came here was to get the tea on Gen 7. In case you're not familiar with this video series, I'm gonna be going through every single Pokemon in Gen 7 and telling you my opinions on them. These are just opinions, they're not fact. This is just like what I think about the Pokemon, so feel free to disagree in the comments. First Pokemon is the grass starter, of course, Rowlet. Rowlet is like this perfectly round, adorable owl. It was my starter when I played Pokemon Sun and it was extremely cute. Dartrix kind of reminds me of Blathers from Animal Crossing and he's also got that little hair thing where he can go like, and I like kind of relate to that. Decidueye is, in my opinion, the coolest looking starter in Generation 7. Unfortunately, move wise and just like general competitive viability, he's definitely the worst. Litten is so cute. If you guys know me at all, you know that cats are like my thing. Like, I really, really love cats. I love every kind of cat. I was originally planning on starting with Litten, and then there was all those leaks about like final forms of the starters, and then I saw its final form which I will get into later. But that is why I did not choose Litten originally as my starter. I did choose it as my starter in Ultra Moon and it's just kind of adorable and a little bit edgy and I love it. Torcat is in my opinion a little bit disappointing because it pretty much just looks like Litten but a little bit more muscly. Incineroar. Okay Incineroar, we need to talk because uh, what? What? Why do you look like Tony the Tiger? Like you went from this four-legged cute little kitty cat tiger thing and now you're on two legs being like Tony Tiger the wrestler. What does Tony the Tiger say? Great! You have to be tickled. The best thing ever! <laughs> Incineroar is the reason that I did not initially start with Litten. And like honestly, even when I started with Litten in Ultra Moon, like I kept it as a Litten for a really long time and like delayed evolving it because I just think its evolutions are so horrible in terms of the way that they look like this is just bad they could have done a cool four-legged tiger thing here and they chose for Tony the Tiger and made him a wrestler why 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 but he is strong and like kind of competitively viable at times so at least there's that when they first revealed the starters of this generation I knew that Popplio was definitely my least favorite it looks kind of like a clown and its color scheme is just not there's just like something off about Popplio Brion or Brione also looks kind of weird to me, especially like the two things that are like coming off its head. Primarina, on the other hand, I kind of like her design. She's basically a mermaid siren thing, so yeah. I also really like its signature move, and its typing is actually really good too. Picky Pack is adorable. I honestly forgot Trumbeak existed before I started looking through these Pokemon because it's just such an irrelevant Pokemon, and I kind of wish that it was just skipped. Toucanon is great. Like, I love its design with its beak that's like this little like cannon that kind of like charges up and then it's like ah, and it attacks and I just, I like two cannon a lot. Young Goose needs to see an orthodontist because those teeth though. Gumshoes is one of my least favorite Pokemon of all time. He resembles a certain human, which I also very much dislike. There are a lot of memes about that, so if you don't know who I'm talking about, go ahead and look up Gumshoes memes, and you will see exactly what I mean. Grubbin is okay. The best thing about Grubbin is that he's very, like, unassuming, and so when he evolves, it's like, whoa, that came from that? Like, that's really cool. Charge Bug being this little electric caterpillar battery, which was surprisingly hard to say. Like, that's kind of a twunked. <laughs> I just wish it wasn't so hard to evolve because, like, Vikavolt though. In terms of design, Vikavolt is like one of the coolest Pokemon of this generation. All right, I'm just gonna say it. I really don't like Crab Brawler. I think it's a pointless Pokemon. I hate its design, just everything about it. No, no, no. And then they give it an unnecessary evolution with an even worse design. You're going for an abominable snowman in this like tropical region. Like it just doesn't make any sense. 
I really like Ori Koryo's designs, but I was really disappointed that it wasn't more powerful and impactful on the meta. Cutie Fly is adorable and tiny, and it's just this little bug fairy, and I'm just like, I just want to put it in my hand and be like, hi little friend, you're so cute. Rubambi is also really cute and can kind of be a pain in the butt to fight, so props to Rubambi. Rock Ruff is a good boy and one of my favorite doggos. Like in Rock, I feel like I kind of have to separate it out into its different forms because they are, except for one of them, pretty different from each other. Midday Lycan Rock is, in my opinion, like the classic Lycan Rock, and I really like its color scheme. I feel like it's simple, but also like neat with the blue eyes. I think it looks like a cool wolf. The Midnight form of Lycan Rock was not initially my favorite, but after playing Pokemon Masters, I definitely think that Pokemon is really cool. And also, Werewolf as a concept is pretty awesome. But this orange form thing is just totally unnecessary. Wishy-washy is such a cool Pokemon. I introduced my friends who had only played like Gen 1 and a little bit of Gen 2 to the latest Pokemon games and the first time they saw a Wishy-washy, oh my god, it was hilarious. They were like, wait, what? What is it doing? Why is it giant? How do I fight this giant thing? It was just tiny man. It was just really funny watching their reaction like knowing what I know because I've played Pokemon like all along. Just for that, Wishy-washy is great. When I first saw Mary Annie or Marini or however you pronounce it. I really didn't think much of it. Like it just kind of like whooped over my head, like under the radar, did not pay any attention to it at all. But then I learned about our great lord and savior, Toxpex. Toxpex is a Pokemon that I have competitively trained. It's super fun using it against real players. If they don't know what they're doing, they just don't know how to deal with it. Like it's just so strong and it has so many like ways to kind of mess people up and just like not die. So I really like Toxamex. Mudbray is okay. It's like kind of cute. Mudsdale is fun and surprisingly powerful. I like that even though it's a horse Pokemon, it feels kind of different from the horse Pokemon that have came before. Dewpider is so cute and silly and it just feels like it fits perfectly in this region where they're like kind of incorporating some like alien space things. Like it looks kind of like a little alien. And then Araquanid, like seeing that in the overworld just come running at you is like, wow. Oh, giant spider, like those are huge. I thought they were like, you know, the size of like a big dog, but no, Araquanid is huge. Romantis is cute, and I always get this like mischievous vibe from it, so you know, that's pretty cool. Lorantis was a little bit confusing for me the first time I saw it because, like, I was like, is it bug type? Like, is it bug grass or something like that? But no, it's actually just a grass type, which I mean, if you're really paying attention in Sun and Moon, it's kind of makes sense and is a little bit obvious because you've had like fire and water and grass as like the three types and then you had three trainers that look kind of like fire, water, and grass so it's like of course it's gonna be a grass type Pokemon. In terms of its design, it's just okay. It's not my favorite design, but it's not the worst design ever. I always forget that Morlul is in this generation because with all the attention it got in the next generation, it just kind of feels like it fits better in Gen 8 as opposed to this one. Shenotic is straight up creepy. Like I feel like not enough people talk about this, but imagine you're in the middle of the woods and this glowing mushroom thing comes walking at you with those like big black eyes and that little just like black smile where it's just like, here I come, I'm gonna get you. I'll be like, oh, okay. Like that is scary. Why don't people think this is scary? Maybe they do. I just don't feel like people talk about it. I love Salandit. Like I spent so much time getting a female Salandit. It's like this little like fire poison rogue bandit thing. And I'm just like, yes everything about that, yes. And then Salazzle kind of feels like that sleek, kind of like a cat burglar, but obviously like a lizard, not a cat. Stiffle! <laughs> I really like Stuffle. Stuffle is so cute. Like one of the cutest Pokemon of all time, if not like the cutest Pokemon. Oh my God, it's Cry, everything about it. I just want to hug it, it's so cute. And the way that it runs at you to be like, you wanna play? It's just so cute, like I can't, I can't handle it, it's so cute. And then Beware is just perfect because it looks adorable and you're just like, oh, the big teddy bear, you wanna give me a hug? And then you learn that it can literally like break trees with its hugs. So like it could obviously break humans, like if it hugs them and isn't careful, 
cool. Its name, Beware, is like, beware of this bear because if it hugs you because it's really cute and stuff, you're just like dead. Bounce weight is okay. I just feel like it's not that original because we have a lot of grass types that look kind of similar to it. Steamy gets a little bit more unique and I also feel like it's pretty cute. And then we get to Sarina, which this might be an unpopular opinion, but I really don't like Sarina's design. It just feels like a little bit too much. Like especially the boots kind of thing that go all the way up its leg. Kumpei is cute. I definitely overlooked it in Generation 7 because there just wasn't really much it could do. Like I kind of feel like maybe an evolution would be good for it. In Gen 8 though, it starts to become more competitively viable, which is weird. Like I never would have thought Kumpei would be something that I would see people run. Oranguru is okay, not one of my favorites don't really know why. It just seems a little bit one note, I guess. Like it's just like this kind of serious Pokemon and I couldn't really see it having like other personalities or anything. It's just like this one thing. And Passimian is the same way. I feel like if they made Passimian more like funny, joking around kind of appearance, it would be a little bit better, but it looks so serious and I'm just like, dude, chill. Wimpod is hilarious. Catching one of them was like, so difficult because they'd always be like hiding and running and I love that they like incorporated that into the mechanics of the game. Galissapod is the same thing, like this is definitely not the type of Pokemon that I would typically be like, oh yeah, like Galissapod, I want one of those. But the way that they incorporate Galissapod's personality into the story of the games is just really cool and so it makes me like it a lot more. Sandy Gas I love, it's got the perfect mix of super duper creepy and sandcastle. Okay, those are weird things to mix, but it's fine. I also like Palisand for similar reasons. Like I like the creepy sandcastle thing. Like I used to make sandcastles with my dad, so it's all just like very nostalgic, but also really creepy. I like this combination of things. Yukumuku is one of the most pointless Pokemon that they have ever created. And I really don't like it, and I don't see the point of it, and I kinda wish it didn't exist. Is that unpopular opinion? Let me know in the comments. I feel like some people might actually really like this. Like I feel like there's lots of art of it and they're like it's cute and I'm like it's not cute it's boring I like type null I like the whole concept that it's a Pokemon that's being restrained I like the idea of it being a chimera I have mixed feelings about Sil Valley though because I don't know if type null needed an evolution I feel like Pokemon has done this before where they make a friendship evolution part of the plot line of the story like you've got this character who's not like the greatest character ever they're kind of like mean or whatever and then they've got this Pokemon and it evolves by friendship and so by the end they've learned their lesson and it evolves. I've seen it before so I'm just kind of like eh. But I'm also a huge fan of the whole Chimera concept so I don't hate it. Minior is kind of boring. I didn't find its gimmick that entertaining. It was just kind of like there. Kamala is adorable but it needs an evolution so badly. Like I feel like all of us were just waiting for this perfect koala Pokemon and then this happened and we're like yes what does it evolve into? And everyone was like nothing! <laughs> and that's such a disappointment. Give it an evolution, please. Terminator is not my favorite. There's something about his design that makes me think that he belongs in a different anime show and not in Pokemon. Like, I don't know what anime specifically, but not Pokemon. This generation did Pikachu clones probably better than like any other generation. Togedemaru is fantastic. I love that it's got like little round ears instead of pointed ears. The whole spike ball thing is very cool. I just feel like it's got a lot going on that makes it different from Pikachu. Like plus one mine and we're like so gimmicky, you know, but like Togedemaru is different enough that I'm like, okay, this is really cool. I wonder how many people clicked on this video just because of Mimikyu. Now I am a big fan of Mimikyu. Not probably the biggest fan of Mimikyu, because I know Mimikyu has like these crazy supporters out there who are just like Mimikyu is the best Pokemon in the entire, you know, all of them. It's not my favorite Pokemon of all time or anything like that. But I do think the concept of Mimikyu is so cool and so unique. When I first saw it, I was just like, oh, great, another Pikachu clone. They already have a Pikachu clone in this generation. What are they doing? And then you learn exactly what's going on with Mimikyu and you have that whole haunted house thing. I'm just so impressed with the way that they created this Pokemon's like basically backstory that it's just like, I like Mimikyu. Bruxish is an abomination. It is one of my least favorite Pokemon of all time. Its color palette is just like, oh God. 
and just everything about it, I'm just like, no, 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 no. Cover my eyes, don't wanna see it ever again. Grandpa is okay, the whole like dragon grandpa concept is just, you know, all right. Delma is totally like blew my mind the first time I fought it because I could not figure out what type it was. I was like, it's probably like a steel type because it's an anchor. Nope. It's probably a water type because it's an anchor. Nope. And I was just like, what even? is this thing like it took me forever to figure out what it was weak to and because i had that really confusing experience with delmis i feel like that brought it up a few pegs because i don't think i would really like this design all that much if it wasn't for how confusing it is in terms of type jang mo o is one of the cutest dragons like i would love to have a jang mo o as a pet it's just adorable but then it evolves into hack mo o and i was kind of like what's going on I like the dinosaur parts of it, but like there's a little bit just too much. Como O is like way over the top. Where can we put these like scales? Let's just put them everywhere. It's just too much. Not to mention that in terms of like the pseudo legendary dragon type thing at the end of the region, I feel like this is one of the weakest. All right, on to the Tapus. I feel like it's kind of hard not to like Tapu Koko because they just introduce him in the story in interesting ways. And I feel like whenever Pokemon does that, it just makes you feel more attached to Legendary. Like in Pokemon Crystal, they did this thing with Suicune, where Suicune would just like appear at different points in Crystal specifically. Not to mention that its design is really cool. Like I like how it has like this mohawk kind of thing on its head and it looks like this like little bird warrior. Tapu Lele is just adorable. Like she gives me these like Shirley Temple kind of vibes where she's just like, mm -hmm. So cute. Tapu Bulu is definitely my least favorite of the Tapus, but I don't hate him. I just don't find him particularly compelling as a character. I think it's because his eyes are really small and not very expressive. So whereas the other Tapus, like you get a sense of their personality a little bit more, you just can't see what Tapu Bulu is really like. Tapu Finny has these like majestic Aphrodite vibes and I'm living for that. Nevi, stay in the bag! Legendary Pokemon evolving is not a typical thing so seeing Cosmoem as a Pokemon at all just like as a concept even is really cool. I love Solgaleo's design but I feel like typing wise it was a little bit weird like I feel like he should have been a fire type a little bit because his name is literally like Sun like Soul so that's a little bit weird. I have less of a problem with Lunala's typing, but I feel like maybe it should have been Psychic Flying. It's less of an issue for me because Ghost Fly too, but like Lunala literally has wings. But its design is also really pretty. Like I love how its wings are. Nihiligo looks way too much like Lily and that always confuses me. Like it's kind of creepy. Why? Why is it like that? I don't know, it's never really explained. Buzzwall is kind of my least favorite Ultra Beast because he kind of looks like a beedrill that like went on steroids or something and just got really jacked. For most I like a lot though. Like I feel like the whole beauty but danger kind of concept that they're going for with her is just really cool. Circuitry is all right. I feel like it should be laughing maniacally all the time, but maybe it's for the better that that doesn't happen because that would probably be really creepy. On second thought, Pokemon, please don't make Zerkatree laugh like that. I wasn't a huge fan of Celesteela's design at first, but then I saw it in Ultra Space and I got it a little bit more and now Celesteela has grown on me quite a bit. And then you've got Kartana who like is really tiny and you'd think like, oh, it's a tiny little, you know, but it's fast and scary and you're like, oh, okay, never mind. That's also really dangerous and just as scary as the giant big monsters. Speaking of big, giant, terrifying monsters, there's Lord. Basically, the embodiment of black holes. Black holes were already terrifying, and now they're in Pokemon. Like with a with a brain, possibly, or a, a mind, or some form of like decision-making power. And that's terrifying. Necrozma as a concept is really cool, and it definitely looks alien-like, which makes sense because it's basically an alien. I like Ultra Necrozma's design better though, the whole like light monster thing, just like glowing. I didn't really like the Dusk Mane and Dawn Wings Necrozma though. There's just something about the designs that just, I don't feel like they work. I don't even know what it is. Like I'm trying to pinpoint it and be like, this is the reason exactly why I don't like this thing. But I don't know, I just didn't like it. Maybe it's like the whole like mind control aspect of it. Like the combining bodies and then you can't control yourself. It's like kind of creepy and weird. 
Like maybe that's it, but I don't know. Magearna as a Pokemon is really cool, but I wish that there was more story around it within the actual games themselves, because I feel like there's so much to this Pokemon that we just don't quite get. Like there should be a whole expansion around this Pokemon like they do in like the modern Sword and Shield type games, but that just wasn't a thing back then, so they didn't do it. Such a missed opportunity. Same thing for Marshadow. Like, oh my God, there's so much like story potential for Marshadow within the game, and they just were like, Nope. But let me say, love Marshadow's design. The little mischievous gremlin thing is just perfect. Poipool is so interesting because it's basically like a starter in another world. And the fact that they kind of like dived into that just a little bit, like I wish they'd even dived into that more where you had like three Ultra Beast starters and they were like a type triangle. Like they kind of missed a little bit of opportunity there. Looks wise, Naganadel is not my favorite. I feel like they were kind of obsessed with making weird bees in this generation. And and I'm not about that. But it's not the worst design ever. Like, it's better than Buzzwall. Deck Attack as design is not my favorite. It's another Pokemon that I don't really feel like it looks like a Pokemon, which, I mean, I guess makes sense because it's an Ultra Beast, but still, like, it doesn't feel like it belongs even with the Ultra Beast. Lacephalon, on the other hand, is kind of perfect. Like, yeah, you're getting creepy clown vibes, but it's supposed to be creepy. And the idea that it just, like, throws its head is just so unique and interesting. Interesting. I like Zara Aura's design a lot. I think it's a good Pokemon, but I feel like it doesn't have enough backstory. Like it was just kind of thrown in at the end of this generation. I wish they built it up a little bit more. Like it was a little bit disappointing. I don't know if Meltan counts as part of this generation because I know it was kind of like an in-between Pokemon Go kind of thing, but I'm going to talk about it here anyways. Meltan is a Pokemon that surprised me because when I first saw it, I didn't think it was real. Like I thought somebody had Photoshopped Ditto and just kind of made it weirder. But now seeing the different ways that they they've incorporated Meltan into different Pokemon things. I actually really like it. I think it's little mischievous personality is really cute. I also really like the concept of Melmetal, you know, combine all the Pokemon together and you get this big giant Melmetal thing. I think Pokemon did a really good job incorporating these as new Pokemon. In this generation, they kind of had some trouble incorporating some of those after the game released still coming into this generation Pokemon. And I feel like they did Meltan and Melmetal more justice than a lot of those other ones that they introduced late. And and that's all the Pokemon in Gen 7. So what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. I'm really looking forward to hearing you guys' opinions about all these Pokemon. I'm gonna really try to post more regularly this year. Last year was kind of a mess because of the pandemic and there was just a lot going on. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I post. Also, if you wanna be notified even before I post, you should follow me on Instagram, at Kayla Capsule, because a lot of times in my stories, I'll say like, oh, filming a video, oh, posting a video, get ready it's coming out at this time so yeah follow me on instagram if you want to be completely up to date with what's going on with my posting schedule because it's definitely still not super regular bye